Okay, in today's video, I'm going to take you through the assembly of the Bone Crusher. And we'll start by going into Place Components and selecting some of the parts that we're going to need in the beginning here. Well, the first part that I'm going to actually start with is this part two, which is going to be the base of the Bone Crusher. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up and bring this into an assembly file. And I'm going to go ahead and actually constrain this part to some work planes. So I'm going to open up the origins or the origin planes for my assemblies and I'm going to actually then make my XZ plane visible as well as my XY plane visible. And by doing that it will allow me to go ahead and constrain this part using a simple make constraint so that the bottom of this part is going to be constrained to the uh, plane and I'll apply that. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the back of the part so that the back of the part is going to be constrained to the XY plane. Once I go ahead and do that, I can go ahead and cancel out of my constraints and turn the visibility off on both planes by just right clicking and hitting visibility. I'm now ready to go ahead and get my next part, which is going to be the part number one. This is that post. And we'll go ahead and constrain that. Whoops, constraint. And we'll constrain that in very similar ways. But we're going to start building up off of the uh, base frame here. So, first, I want to have a flush constraint with the two bottoms so they stay uh, flush. And now I'm going to go ahead and set up a simple mate relationship between the back of the post and the back of the frame and hit apply with that. Next thing we'll do is we're going to go ahead and set up a relationship between the edge of the uh, post and the edge of the frame and that's going to be a flush relationship that's going to then have an offset. So I'm going to go ahead and give it an offset of 3.5 and I believe that that is the correct number. Just to check that I'm going to go to my top view and I'll grab my tools and my distance selector and just select from one side here to the other and that gives me 3.555 and I'm going to check from this side to this side see where I end up here 3.555 so we're pretty darn close there to center and we'll go ahead and just continue building up on the part so as we continue up, I'm going to go back to assemble. I'm going to grab my place, grab my parts, and let's look at three, which is going to be the bone crushing plate. And we'll grab the constraint tool. This time I want to use an uh, insert constraint. Grab the insert constraint, grabbing the top edge of the bone crusher and the top edge of the post. Change the solution here so it's going to be an aligned solution. And then I'm going to also give it an offset We'll bring this down here, say about seven inches, and then hit apply. Now if I move this, the whole part's still moving around here, and you can see that. So I want to go ahead and I just want to ground this bottom plate, bottom piece here by right-clicking and hitting grounded. Now what that does is it gives me some understanding of how these parts will still function given the constraints I have. So I want to now go ahead and grab my constraint tool again, and this time I want to use my angle constraint and just a simple angle solution and I want to then constrain this face to this face at a zero degree angle and by doing that that goes ahead and sets up the angle constraint so it will apply and now cancel all right so now we've set up that relationship that won't move anymore and we'll go ahead back here to place grab place again and let's start moving down through oh, that was that part so part six now it's going to be the rack and I'm going to go ahead and open that up, place that into my model. And I really want to align this very quickly, get the teeth on the other side. So I'm going to select the rack, grab free rotate, move my mouse so I'm not freely orbiting. I'm just going to then be able to rotate it on one plane and spin this around. So that's the way I want to do it. So I finish that up. That's in the right position now, or at least close to the right position. Now I can go ahead and start constraining things. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a simple flush constraint so that the front face of this, these teeth actually align with the front face of these teeth and hit apply. And then I want to actually move this up here a little bit so that I can apply a constraint from this front edge 
to this front edge. And that starts to line things up a little bit better. And hit cancel. And I'm going to remember that mate because I'm actually going to need to delete that mate. Because in order to have the function I need, this will not move up and down. In fact, what's going to happen is if I move this, it's going to spin around that edge. It's really not what I want to have happen. So I'll do an undo here. And I'm actually going to delete this mate. That was a real positioning mate uh, for this process. But with that set up, I can go ahead and just delete the mate because it won't allow it to move in the right, right way. And what I really want to do is do another uh, flush mate, which is going to be from that edge to this edge. But it's now going to need to be offset, and I believe that number is 0.75. So now that that's set up, should only be able to move this in one position now, which would be up and down. That's the way it needs to move. So with that set up, uh, we can go ahead and continue to place the remaining pieces here. So we'll keep going down, and I don't need the screw. I'm not looking for, well, actually, yeah, let's take that next. I'm going to grab the gear and go ahead and place the gear in the drawing. And let's spin it around here because what I really want to do is get those two lines, this pitch circle and the uh, line indicating location of pitch on the same side. Because what I want to do is I want to set this up so that the gear and the side of the rack are flush so that they can't move away from each other. And now I want to set up a relationship so that there is a tangent relationship between the pitch diameter circle and the actual line for the pitch on the gear. And once I've done this, the gear should be able to just move up and down only, uh, sliding up and down the gear. So with that set up, I can now start looking at the remaining pieces here. So grab place, and let's move on down here. Gear's good. Gonna need that pin, but not yet. I really wanna get, there it is, number four. I wanna get the frame. So now I have the frame in position. I'm going to go ahead and utilize a simple insert constraint again from the top of the part to the top of the post. Make that flush, and then we'll drop this down a little bit. Actually, let's not go through. Let's go to. That looks good. All right. Now that that in position, it moves back and forth. So I need to go ahead and set up a simple angle constraint to the side of the face. And we'll actually go to the side of the frame here. And whoops, need to have that solution set up. Sorry about that. So now we're all set up here with a zero degree angle, and we'll hit apply, and we're all set to go. All right, well, now with this all set up uh, and the gear is in the position, we're now going to be ready to start moving into the process of setting up motion by bringing in uh, some post and some other parts and pieces. To keep this from getting too long, I'm going to make a separate video on animating the gear and the rack. So let's look for the rest of the animation in part two.